Hey folks, Professor Fiore here, and we're going to talk about why delta conversions for AC circuits. If you haven't seen the DC version of this, which is actually on the inverse, the delta Y, I strongly suggest you take a look at that one first. It's a little, a little easier to work through the DC version than the AC version, as you'll see in just a moment. So here's the basic layout. We have a Y configuration, also known as a T configuration, that we start with three complex impedances. And we can turn this into what's known as a delta configuration. You can think of the letter delta built here. This is sometimes also referred to as a pi configuration because it kind of looks like the Greek letter pi if you squint a lot and don't think about it. In any case, there's a set of equations to go from one to the other. The proof of these equations, because I'm not a person who just likes to throw equations out there, the proofs for this are found in the AC circuits text. If you're not familiar, follow the links in the video description and you can download that text for free in PDF or ODT format. And if you're so inclined, you can go to Amazon and get a very inexpensive paper copy of it. In any case, Proofs are there. Take a look at them. So what we do is we take the complex impedances in each of these three positions, sort of grind them through the formula. And this actually looks more complicated than it really is. You notice the numerators are identical on each of these. And all that ends up happening is you just divide by a different value depending on what you're looking for. And there is a pattern here. So ZA, this one right here, is divided by ZF. You could kind of think of that as the opposite element, right? So you divide by F. So the same kind of thing that we see over here, like with C, the opposite element would be D, okay? And for B, you know, we got E, okay? So that's what we're seeing over here. So you really, you only have to compute the numerator once, and then you just divide out three times and you get your values. The thing to remember, of course, is uh, this, this is set up for a complex impedance. So um, you know, you probably don't want to do this longhand. You probably want a calculator that's going to take care of the vectors for you because this can get tedious real quick. But in any case, we can apply this in a number of different areas. One possibility is in three phase circuits, but maybe something a little more prosaic would just be maybe something like an H bridge circuit, which we've seen before. So here we have our network. You cannot simplify this really any more than it is. In other words, you can't solve for something like VY over here using just series parallel simplification techniques. Not going to work. You know, uh, R2 is not in series with R3, thanks to R1. You can't say it's in parallel with this combo over here, again, thanks to R1. So you know, you're kind of stuck where you are. Now, you could use mesh analysis. You could use nodal analysis. There are things you can do, but this is one approach you can take, right? So what we're going to do here is a Y to delta. Now, in the in DC version of this video, I did the opposite. I did a delta to Y. So they're both useful. So here's what we're going to do. Is we're going to take this section right here with these complex impedances, and we're going to do the conversion. So this we're going to say is in a Y form. If you don't see it directly, let me just flip back to the original. So this is what we have. And all I'm going to do in the uh, circuit we just looked at really is the X part is up here, right? So ZD is up here. I just sort of bent it 90 degrees up. So here's your X, here's your Y, there's your Z, right? So D, E, and Z, F, like so, all right? So let's go back to that circuit, all right? So, so this is the X, the Y, and the Z, right? So I just took this and bent it up. All right, now the computations for this involve ohmic values. So you are going to have to sit down and compute things like X sub C and X sub L. Like I said, you're gonna have a complex impedance Z for this, this, and you know, this one just to keep our lives a little easier, I just left it as a simple resistance. But we've got some capacitance, we've got some inductance, off you go. If you want good accuracy, you're going to have to carry out the digits. So when I did this, I carried everything out to um, six digits and then 
plug them into Tina over here in our equivalent circuit, our converted circuit, which I'll show you in just a moment, um, Tina will take five-digit values. So, you know, that's pretty good. It's not 72-digit values. You know, there, there will be some, you know, final digit, say fifth, sixth digit inaccuracy when we go through this. But in any case, so remember, these elements right here are going to get converted. So here's our converted circuit, right? So the R2 and R3 are, are uh, the original values along with the supply. And right in here is the converted system, right? So here's X, Y, and Z, all right? So again, it's sort of on its side compared to the original, right? Like this. So the X is actually up here and we kind of see ZB is straddling across the input. In other words, X to Z, right? Point X to point Z. Right? There's our point X and there's our point Z. So we're just straddling that. So we come up with these three complex impedances. And then for the fun part, of course, we have to work backwards, knowing what the frequency is, in our case, one kilohertz, to work backwards to find actual capacitance and inductance values. Right? So yeah, this is a little bit more work than doing it in DC. That's why I said make sure you watch the DC version of this first. It's a lot easier to do. But in any case... As you can see, I've calculated all my values here. And if, capital if, the transform is correct, if this idea is correct, then we should get the exact same value for Vy in both of these circuits. So we can do that very quickly here, just doing an AC analysis, just calculate the nodal voltages. I don't really care about any of the other potentials in here. Like, I don't care what's the potential across Ra, or, you know, what's the current through RB or something like that. All I really care about is that one voltage because that's the whole point of this. All right. All right. So here in the um, converted circuit, we have a magnitude of 567.4975 millivolts at 5.1353 degrees. Okay. So let's just... Remember part of that, 567.4975. And we'll come over here and look at the original circuit. 567.4977. All right. So that last digit, right, the seventh digit is off. Well, like I said, you know, we expect this to be, you know, not perfect with a capital P. What about the angle? 5.1353. All right, 1353, and we get 5.1351. So, you know, what are we looking at? Tenths, tenths of a milli degree is what we're off here. So, yeah, this thing is spot on, all right? If you carry out the digits, you're going to get it. So this, like I said, is sort of a uh, impossible problem to solve if you're just trying to use series parallel techniques. Right? But by using the conversion here, we have something you could solve. Because this right here is a simple series parallel thing, right? We can take this impedance, put it in parallel with R2C. We can take this impedance, put it in parallel with R3C. So I have a lumped impedance here and a lumped impedance here. And in fact, if all I'm really interested in is finding Vy, I don't even care about this piece over here because it's just a divider between these two things. And I can calculate and see what we get for Vy, right? Is my converted version the same as my original version? You betcha, all right? So this is a fun thing to play with. You, know, you can monkey with the amplitudes here and, um, you know, try different values and see what happens. It's this section, right, this section right here between x, y, and z um, that we've converted. So you could put in new values for R2 and R3. Um, like I said, change the, change the source over here, and you should consistently get the same values on both sides. All right, so give it a whirl. A useful tool in the kit bag. Until next time, this is Professor Fiori saying, have a good one.